Well, the prospect of an economic slowdown, it's no new story. Just look at today's forecast from the International Monetary Fund. This shows the growth in advanced economies at just 1.3% this year, then barely crawling to 1.4% next year. That's where all that recession talk has come from. Well, in Australia, the growth rate is tipped to be 1.6% this year and then 1.7% next year. But look, these latest forecasts, they're not far off the Reserve Bank's latest forecasts themselves. In fact, the RBA's a touch more pessimistic, 1.6% percent this year and also next year as well. So let's listen now to the chief economist of the IMF, Pierre-Olivier Gorinchas. A sharp tightening of global financial conditions, which is sometimes called a risk-off event, would have a dramatic impact on credit conditions and public finances, especially in emerging market and developing economies. It would precipitate large capital outflows, a sudden increase in risk premia, a dollar appreciation in a rush towards safety, and major declines in global activity amid lower confidence. In such a severe downside scenario, global growth this year could fall to about 1%. So to analyse that, let's bring in here one of Australia's most respected economists, Chris Richardson, who's with me now. Chris, many thanks for your time. I mean, it paints a pretty dire sort of a picture, and you've also got a situation where the Treasurer is doing the same thing right now. And, and look, uh, to be clear, there are reasons to expect a major global slowdown. Um, a big part of that is simply the massive increase in interest rates uh, that we've seen. That hurts. Uh, there is the earlier uh, kerfuffle in energy prices. That hurts. Uh, and as we were just hearing from the IMF then, uh, the um, bank runs in, in uh, the US and in Europe, that's a risk of getting worse still, uh, and that combination hurts. Now, to be clear, none of that spells an outlook nearly as nasty as, as uh, happened globally in COVID or, for that matter, global financial crisis. It's a slowdown and we can see this one coming, um, but it's not maybe that scary. OK, so not scary, but you've got a Treasurer right now really warning about Australia's economic slowdown uh, as he sets up this year's budget. But you get a sense that maybe the Treasurer is crying wolf because, after all, his budget, as we sit here right now, is $20 billion better off than it was in October last year when he last handed it down. Uh, it is this international meeting, the one the Treasurer is just uh, attending. Uh, it provides the backdrop to the Australian budget every year. Every Treasurer comes back talking about the gravity of the, uh, the global outlook and the risks, essentially to frame the local budget uh, as a difficult one, one where uh, the government of the day has to make hard choices. Uh, and although that's true, you're entirely correct. Our budget is looking substantially better uh, than the last time the official figures were updated. Sure, the Australian economy is slowing higher interest rates, energy costs, um, you know, those bank runs over in uh, US and, and Europe, uh, but none of those are hitting us hard here. We've got much faster population growth. And the key to the budget uh, is that things like iron ore prices currently riding very high compared to the official assumptions for them. What I kind of wonder sometimes, and we've seen a taste of it with the superannuation tax on those with accounts above $3 million, an increase there, I kind of wonder with big spending initiatives going out into the future, NDIS, whether the Treasurer is trying to set us up for some sort of a, a tax reform where there are going to be more taxes for higher paid individuals. Uh, that's possible. Um, the other thing potentially on the table, though maybe not in the budget itself, uh, is rejigging the way we tax gas, the PRRT, Petroleum Resource Rent Tax. Uh, to be fair, that is something that does need uh, some fixing. We're not taxing gas uh, terribly well um, in Australia. Um, but the basic point, right, you know, all the revenue good news uh, at the moment, there is a lot of uh, that that's ultimately temporary, as magnificent as it is. Uh, there are ongoing challenges uh, around the cost of defence. We're hearing about submarines and the like, and the cost of uh, social services, where both governments uh, got it wrong and, and underfunded, as a variety of royal commissions and the like have pointed out. Um, over and above that, of course, there is the very rapid growth uh, in spending on the NDIS. That combination says... Uh, there are some uh, lingering challenges to be dealt with.
All right, let's go back to Pierre Olivier Gorinchas and his statement about liquidity one being one of the big issues. But then the Treasury Secretary, Janet Yellen, overnight then came out and said, well, look, she's seeing no sign of it. Have a listen. I've not really seen evidence at this stage suggesting a contraction in credit, although that is a possibility. Um, I believe our banking system remains strong and resilient. It has um, solid capital and liquidity. And the U.S. economy is obviously performing exceptionally well. So, Chris Richardson, to your point, I mean, really, some of this can be seen to be really a bit alarmist in some ways. Yes, the economies are slowing, but as long as the banks don't turn off the tap of liquidity, probably the economies keep on ticking along. Yeah, I, I think that is uh, entirely true. Don't forget the IMF is a uh, big institution. Its wheels turn slowly. It will have finalised those forecasts when perhaps some of the banking risks look larger than they look today. Uh, equally, if Secretary Yellen has an economy to protect, um, it is probably true that smaller banks uh, in the US and Europe are going to be a bit more cautious uh, in their lending than they have been. Um, but I doubt that that's going to be dramatic. It's so far so good on that banking crisis front. And I doubt that it's um, going to be a major negative. Sure, interest rates, big negative for the world economy. To some extent, energy prices, though they are now well down on, on their peaks, uh, the third uh, in, in the list of things to worry about would be uh, those banking risks. And so far, they look well contained. Tell you what, Chris Richardson, always good to chat to you on the program. Many thanks for your time today.